Hello, my name is Reverend Tom Stanley and I am the senior minister here at Central Christian Church in Enid, Oklahoma. I want to welcome you to our online ministry. During these profoundly challenging times, it is important to remain safe, socially distanced, and wear a mask whenever possible. My hope and prayer for you and your family is that you will remain safe and healthy and blessed by God. Our online ministry here at Central Christian Church is growing. We are touching the lives of thousands of people every single month. Our goal is to share the gospel and good news of Jesus Christ, our love for our neighbors, and the welcome of God to everyone. If you're new to our ministry, please check out our website at centralenid.org and our Facebook page. A completely new website is in the works and will be rolling out in the next few weeks, so don't be surprised if it changes suddenly. If you would like to join this fellowship and partner your ministry with ours, we would welcome you with open arms. All are welcome in our ministry, fellowship, and worship. If you would like to support the ministry of this place as we change lives of people in Enid, in Oklahoma, and around the world, there, there are several ways that you can give. You can connect to our website and give online. You can download the Givelify app and find Central Christian Church of Enid and donate that way. We also have the ability to take ACH deposits which are directly withdrawn from your bank account. You can use your credit card on the website or on the Givelify app. If you have questions about how to support the ministry of God here at Central, please don't hesitate to call our office. My deepest prayer is that God will bless you and make God's face to shine down upon you and grant you peace today. Have a blessed day. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. So, gentlemen, children, in this room right now, ladies, don't listen. If you have not wished your mother a happy Mother's Day, now is the time, because I just did.
So, just saying. Ah, good morning. I, I normally wear a robe and a stole on days like this, but my robe and stole had an accident last week. <laughs> a can of Coca-Cola exploded very close to my robe and stole, and they were covered. <laughs> it took a little longer to get those dry cleaned than I, was, than I gave it credit for, so they will be back tomorrow, I'm hopeful. Although, we'll see. I have crossed my fingers. Brown Coke on a silk stole, not a good combination. <laughs> oh well, that's the way it goes. First of all, happy birthday, Judy. How are you? And I'm not going to ask how many, because I'm smarter than that. But happy birthday to Judy Jordan. And John and Carol, happy anniversary. You're welcome. So, grateful you are here today. And I have a couple of things to give away since it's Mother's Day. Now, again, I am not, I may have, well, let's say, let's say it this way, I may have been born at night, but it was not last night. So when I was offered the opportunity to hand out a flower, or flowers, to the senior mother in the room, I made sure and used those words very carefully. So, for the mother that has the youngest child in the room, I thought it was going to be Allison. Is Allison here? She is here. So we will give Allison the purple flowers. Gwen, you want to help me? That's okay. That's okay. That counts. She is in this building. Will you take that to your daddy for me? Thank you. And come back. I'll give you another one. <laughs> All right. So, next question. <laughs> I don't know the answer to this, and I pride myself on knowing the answers to questions before I ask them. Who has, let's call it three descendants in this room? Anybody? In this room, or coming into the room, three generations. I, I, I think I know who it is. It's Dorothy. It absolutely is. So, Dorothy. <sighs> Thank you, Paige. <laughs> You're welcome. And now the one that's most likely to get me in trouble. The senior lady in the room. Anybody want to claim it? I'm not going to ask how old you are. So if you want to claim this after worship, you're welcome. Because this pastor's not going to stand up here and say, is there anybody over 85? That is not going to happen. <laughs> they don't care. All right, so ladies, if you are older than 85, feel free to raise your hand. They don't care. I got two. And three. All right. Shall we go up again? Oh, four. 87. Still got two. Three. All right. I'm going to 90. 
All right, we have a winner. There was two? Wait, who'd I miss? Door, okay. All right, so we have a, con we have a concession because she already got one. All right. There you go, ma'am. You're welcome. <sighs> Happy Mother's Day, ladies. Let's watch this video. Uh-oh, Jason didn't get my Mother's Day video. That's all right. We'll move on. <sighs> on the back of your bulletin is the announcements for today. First of all, those of you that joined us for the Senior Adult Luncheon, thank you. We served more than 50 people lunch at our first Senior Adult Luncheon. That was representing actually four churches instead of just three. I'm even more excited about that. We had a great turnout, a great meal, and a great time of fellowship. The next meal will be the first Thursday in June. I would love for more of you to join us. We had a great time of fellowship, a great time of just being present with each other. So thank you for joining us, and I hope you will join us again. Today is Mother's Day. As we said, Central Christian Church is hosting the welcome table tonight, so if you have a few minutes and want to be present, bring your kids and grandkids along. We could always use a couple of extra hands for the welcome table. We begin cooking at 2, but we could use hands about 3.30. There will be no youth tonight because it is Mother's Day. Valerie's Bible study takes place at 1 o'clock on Mondays on Zoom. Tuesday at 5 o'clock, the Emmaus Women's Group meets. There is no 6 o'clock Bible study on Tuesday. It keeps getting bumped, so we're going to place that on hold for now. Wednesday, the choir meets at 7. Not this week? Mayfay is this week. Okay. And Friday is Community Dental Day at 425, 4125 West Owen K. Garriott, the Great Plains Family Dentistry. If you don't have dental insurance or you just need some dental work done, I believe that is going to be near free. So, Call Candy on Monday. She has a flyer with the rest of the information. If you need that type of service, we're giving those flyers out tonight at the welcome table. And if you need that type, that type of help, we would love to share that with you. Next Sunday, May 16th, is Senior Sunday. Molly Birchall will graduate from Chisholm High School. She'll be playing the prelude in both services because... I wanted to hear her play again. She is quite fantastic. We will be hosting a reception for her between the services in the loggia. As much as I would like to celebrate TJ graduating, it's not going to happen. So, love my child, love my child, love my child. Anyway, the Belingi Hospital is our dollars for mission in May. And the welcome table will be in June. Are there other announcements I have missed? Yes, ma'am. Don't forget your red books. Don't forget your red books. All right. Would you stand with me as we begin our time of worship? Holy and amazing God, we are grateful to be in your house today as we celebrate and remember our mothers, as we are present to hear your word proclaimed in prayer, in song, in scripture. Center our hearts and minds today, Lord. May we hear from you. May we know you better. 
Bless us, Lord, and help us to love better. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Monty, would you lead us in our call to worship? Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. We wait for the Lord and worship with gladness. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning. Praise for them springing fresh from the world. Sweet the rain's new fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, sprung in completeness. Where God's feet pass. Amen. Would you read our scripture, Monty? The scripture this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Amen. You may be seated. All right, kiddos. Let's talk for a minute. Good morning. How are you? Thank you all for your help, ladies. Good morning. So, how are we? Okay. So, all right. Did everybody tell their moms happy Mother's Day? Okay. Now, I have a question. What does it mean... To love somebody. Okay. When it means to love someone, it means that you'll always take care of them and they'll, and they'll always be by your side. Ooh, very good definition. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Well, um, love means that um, it'll always be... Um, they'll always be by your side, like Hope you said, mm -hmm. and they'll and you'll take care of them no matter what, even in dark times. Okay. Um, and love lasts forever. Forever. Ooh, very good. Our children seem to have a pretty good definition of love. We heard it from Corinthians, but our kids just echoed those exact words. Love lasts forever. Love cares no matter what. And love will always be on your side. That is another really good one. Love is on your side even when you're wrong. Or right. That's exactly right. So today, we're going to talk about love. And now that, that may seem like, oh, that's an easy one. But it's really not. Yes, ma'am. Um, love is a term. Uh, no, no. That's okay. That's okay. The microphone's scary. <laughs> Love 
is a challenging topic. Because we as the church are called to love one another always. Even when we might not like each other. Even when we don't agree. Even when we're struggling. Yes, ma'am. Um, even when you and some rough times and one of your family dies, love is yes, still ma'am. with you. Yes, ma'am. That's exactly right. Yes, ma'am. When you're, and when you're mad at someone, you always will still love them. Yes, ma'am. No matter what, even if alive or dead. Yes, ma'am. I think the kids get it. Aww. Aww. Okay. So, I think our kids understand what love is. I think, I think, it might be time for the church, again, big C, to re-embrace what it means to love one another. So, I'm going to pray for you all, and I'm going to send you to worship and wonder. Miss Judy's going to guide you, I think. She's right back there. And your mama. Yeah, we got, we got two ladies that are going to take you all to worship and wonder, so let's pray real quick. God, I thank you for the wisdom that is present in these children. I thank you for the revelation of what it truly means to love one, to love someone from their eyes. We ask your blessing on them as they go to worship and wonder. We ask your protection on them as they continue to grow, to seek you, to know you more. Bless them, Lord, and keep them. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, see y'all later, okay? Our prayer concern list is also on the back of your bulletin. I have two new ones for you. Buddy Arnold is in rehab at St. Mary's, and Jim got some distressing test news this week, so we want to re-add Jim Owens to our prayer list. We continue to pray for Teresa, Karen, Leanne, John, Margaret, Irene, Roy, Dorothy, Mary Ruth, Brent, Jennifer, Siler, Mike. Giovanni, Joe, Scott, Suzanne, and Jim. Are there others you would like us to add to this prayer list? Yes, sir. All right. Kurt Horrell had some minor surgery yesterday and is recovering. So we want to hold him in our prayers. Bob Rogers. He's in Oklahoma City? Okay. I hadn't heard that. I heard he'd, he'd fallen. I did not get the report that he was still in Oklahoma City. Okay. All right. Are there others? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Holy One. We're grateful for these moments where we can draw near to you. Where we can bring our hurts, our concerns, our worries before your throne. Today, as we pray together, we ask, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear the deepest urgings of our heart. Hear the true worries, stresses, and challenges 
of your children today. We seek your presence, who your Son has taught us all things are possible through. So we ask for healing, comfort, and peace on behalf of these that we love. We ask for wisdom and grace on behalf of the doctors, therapists, nurses that will care for these that we love. Pour out your Spirit in them that they may be your hands and feet today just as we seek to be. As we pray the prayer your Son taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Oh, goodness. So as I told you last week, I spent a lot of time in continuing education this week. I joined Zoom at 5 till 9 every morning and basically got off at 5 after 5 at the end of the day. (laughs) 35 plus hours with a 15 minute break in the morning, a 15 minute break in the afternoon, and a little bit of lunch in between. It was a long week. And I've struggled with how to share that with you. I've told several of you what the class was about it was conflict resolution and mediation within the church. And, you're, and as, you're, as you're sitting there pondering that, I'll let you, let you sit with that for a minute because we're the church. We're not supposed to fight, right? We're not supposed to have conflict. We're not supposed to get mad at each other and say things like, you're not a Christian if... 
pretty sure we're not supposed to do that. Now, one of my favorite role plays of the week was this one and one you all have heard before. You know, that rotten committee, they can't possibly be Christian if they picked that color of carpet. Now, I've read, hold on, let me, let me find my, my spare Bible. I've read this book, cover to cover, on, I do it every two years, so we'll call it at least ten times in the last twenty years, and nowhere does it delineate what color carpet is required in the church to be a Christian. Nowhere. I'm pretty sure it says that all that is required to be called by the name of Christ is to claim the name of Christ. Now, it may be silly and it may be hard to hear, but sometimes we get a little annoyed with each other. Sometimes we get downright frustrated and angry with each other. Sometimes we get mad at that old rotten pastor who said something from the pulpit that I didn't want to hear. This class was all about what it means to love one another. And so that is the perfect topic for Mother's Day. As I began to navigate what I was going to share with you yesterday afternoon, I began to dwell on the memory of my grandmother, on the presence of my mother in my life these last few years. I've talked a lot about Bernie. We lost her 17 months ago. She was nearly 98. She'd have been 99 this year. She continues, even now, having claimed her faith in Jesus, to be the model of how I view what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Even now, she is still that role model for me. She is still the model I have in my brain of what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. She is still the model of what it means to be church together for me. She was born into a Disciples of Christ family. Coming back from World War II, her brother had befriended a Baptist chaplain in Europe. And when they came back together, they formed a new church in Midwest City, as many, many people did. And Bernie went with her brother and joined that church. Now, had my, mother, had my grandmother remained a disciple of Christ, she would have been an elder in any church she chose to be present in. She just had that knack for caring and loving people. One of the hardest moments in her life really one of the hardest moments in my life, was to watch as the church I grew up in was tearing itself apart. They were, they were angry, 
hurt feelings. Hostility. You could feel it when you opened the door of the church. Our music minister then had kidney failure. He needed a transplant. I think I've told you all that story a little bit. The deacons of our church decided they weren't getting their money's worth out of him as a minister, and they started tailing him everywhere he went. I know, I know, it's okay. They were documenting the hours he was working. The person who led this charge and who broke my heart probably the worst was my very first youth minister. One of those people that I viewed as an example of what it means to be a Christian. My grandmother stood up the night that our music minister told the church he was leaving. Everybody knew why. He was being hounded out of the building. My grandmother, who had not spoken publicly in church in my memory, because again, she was a woman and you didn't do that in the 80s in the Baptist church, stood up and said, This is wrong. She was not hateful. She was not anything other than loving. She told the leadership of this church they were wrong. This is not how we care for and love one another. Church conflict is hard. People get hurt feelings. People leave. Sometimes we forget what it means to love one another. Bernie, it didn't matter to her what I had done, how I had failed, the problem I was wrestling with, the theological question I was asking. It did not matter to her what it was. She loved me through it. Even when I was a stupid teenager, being stupid at every turn, staying out late with my friends, goofing off and doing things I knew I shouldn't do. She loved me through it. I try to model this with my children. I don't always succeed, but I do try. Even Sandy knows that when Bernie said, now Tommy, it was time to listen. (laughs) Sandy and I were visiting with Scout and TJ when Scout was very young, less than a year old. Scout had been put down in Bernie's sitting room to take a nap. We were all sitting out in the dining room chatting. And Bernie leaned over and said, Scout needs a blanket. It's cold in that room. Now I said, Grandma, Scout sleeps hot. I promise she doesn't need a blanket. She says, now Tommy, that baby's not as thick through as you are, and she needs a blanket. I said, yes, ma'am. It doesn't matter how simple the issue is, no matter how powerful, dynamic, or troubling the issue is within the church, within the family, within the life of our community, 
we, the church, are to respond with love. The Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17, Jesus is talking to his disciples as the time of his ministry draws to a close. He says to them, As God has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept God's commands and remained in God's love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command, love each other as I have loved you. Love each other. My hope, my prayer is that God's word will be a blessing to you today, that it will touch your spirit, that it will touch your heart, that it will grow your relationship not only with God, but with each other. And it will, again, show you what it means to model Christ's love in the world today. Jason says he has the sermon video, so let's watch this together. What if we could love the way Jesus did? Passionately, faithfully. What if we could love the way powerful. Jesus did? What if the way we love could make a difference in the world around us? Powerfully. What if that love looked at everyone? What if the way we the way love could make a difference in the world around us? A love which doesn't see the what past. What if that love looked at everyone? but is consumed by a desire to see people come to know a Jesus. A love which doesn't see the past. A love which is patient, consumed kind. by a desire to see people come to Not know Jesus. Not envious or prideful. A, a love, love which, which puts others before kind. ourselves. Not Jesus envious or over anger. anger. A, a love, love which, which puts others, others before ourselves. Trusts, chooses peace hopes, over anger. Perseveres, a love which protects. Do Trusts, love like this, hopes, do we love like Jesus? Do we love like this? Maybe it's time to ask a simple question. Do we love like Jesus? How can we love? Maybe better. it's time to ask a simple question. How can we love better? Love better. That's what I want to talk about today. How do we love better? Just a couple of weeks ago, we watched on Easter Sunday morning as five young people proclaimed their faith and followed the Lord in baptism. We celebrated. We remembered that we are called to love one another, that we are called to love people enough to share Jesus with them. That we are called to care for those that are hurting. That we are called to serve, to teach, to give of ourselves. As I was wandering and navigating through that training class this last week, I really wondered how I was going to put that into words on Sunday morning. I, I like to bring the things I do, whether that is camp, whether that is a seminary retreat, I like to bring those words on Sunday morning. And it was not until yesterday afternoon that I really connected the dots for myself. That we, the church need to love better. What better theme for Mother's Day 
The image our children have of a mother's love is unending. It is safe. It's amazing. It's powerful. It's forgiving. It's accepting. They told us that in their words. Now, to be clear, not everyone has that experience with a mother. And I am deeply and profoundly sorry for those who have had a vastly different experience. But my relationship with my mother and my grandmother is at the very core of who I am today. Why I am the minister I am today. Why I love to cook. As my wife says, cooking is my love language. Why I'm the parent I am today. And so many other things. Each and every one of us is part and parcel of the experiences and the people who have touched our lives. Especially our families. Sometimes those experiences are broken, damaged. And we have to struggle through them. Sometimes those experiences are profoundly positive and we still struggle. Hmm. Does that sound like church? It really does, doesn't it? The answer is always love. The answer is always love. We have an opportunity and a power that can literally change the world around us. The love of Jesus Christ. We can turn away harsh words. We can turn away hate. We can build bridges. But let's not talk pie in the sky. Let's talk about right here in this building. We can send missionaries to Africa and build hospitals and care for people who need health care. We can build water wells in Africa where people walk miles for a drink of water. We can serve people at a door a meal right out here on Sunday evening who are hungry. We don't do those things to make us look good. We don't do those things for a pat on the back. We do those things because we are taught to love our neighbor. To love one another. Each and every one of us sitting here today is the product of someone else's love. And no, I'm not talking about your parents even though that might be who shared Jesus with you. I'm talking about that person who shared their faith with you. I'm talking about that person who loved you enough to share Jesus with you. You are a product of that love, just as I am. It was not done for a pat on the back. It was not done To make themselves look good. To check box. Hey, I led someone to Christ today. It was done because they love you. It was done because Jesus loved them first. We do these things out of love. Harry has been to Jamaica, the Dominican Republic too. Don, the Dominican Republic, to teach people, to help people who are not even considered people in their country. Who have no identity in their country. Because of love. Love. 
the Week of Compassion, a disciples organization that helps people no matter their faith, no matter their background, no matter where they are. We help them because they are hurting. We do this out of love. Love can change the world. Love has already changed our world. The question is, how will we do it better? Would you pray with me? God, in your mercy, pour out your Spirit in us and help us to love better. Help us to mirror the love of Jesus Christ better in this world today. Help us to show the world we are different because of your love. Help us. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Take time to be holy, speak up with thy Lord. Abide in him always and feed on his word. Make friends of God's children, help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing God's blessing to seek. Take time to be holy, the world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conflict, his likeness shall see. Our offering, our communion, it's all about love. It's all about how we love others. It's all about how we love God. So I'm going to invite you to give out of that love. Out of the abundance that loved you enough to send Jesus. Let's take the offering.
Gracious God, we are grateful today to be present with you on this Mother's Day. We pray for and ask you to bless all of the mothers present and represented here. As we move into this time of offering, we ask you to bless the gifts that have been given today. Bless the time, talents, and resources of our church family. Help us to use them with grace and mercy to proclaim the name of Jesus in our community and the world today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This table is all about love. As I read the story of Jesus before Pilate, there's no fear there. Jesus simply says, you who would have no power over me, were it not given to you by God. As I ponder those words, and I ponder the Son of the living God being nailed to the cross, I have to ask, why? Why would Jesus come and be born? Why would Jesus allow these beings that He created to do this to Him? The answer is, This table is all about what it means to be loved. So come and be welcome. Come and be present as we break bread together just as Jesus did with His disciples on that night before the cross. He said to them, take this bread and eat. It is my body and it will be broken for you. After they had eaten, he took a cup, he gave thanks, he blessed it, and said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Drink. Together, we will be present in the love of Christ together. With me. Our most loving God, as we remember and celebrate Holy Communion, may the Holy Spirit guide us and help us to follow Jesus' command to love one another. And may the mystery of this bread and cup encourage us to make a difference through our love for others. And may this bread and cup help us to love better. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen.
as we share the cup and the bread together. We break bread just as Jesus did. We ask for renewal. We seek God to strengthen us and prepare us for the work ahead. Let us take the bread together. As we drink this cup together, we ask God to help us to love better. If you need a moment of renewal, a moment of prayer, this altar is open. I or one of the elders would love to share that with you. If you would partner your ministry with this place, please, we would welcome you with open arms. And if you would know this love that changes the world, come, let us share him with you. Would you stand with me as we sing, they will know we are Christians by our love, 494. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Go from this place and love better. Amen. Go now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. Go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. Though he will guide you in all you do. Go now in love and show you believe. Reach out to others so all the world can see. God will be there watching from above. Go now in peace, in faith, and in